Hmm. Is mm -hmm. Do we know if Carol is joining us? Um, I haven't heard anything otherwise, so I should probably yeah, be here in person. She'll be right here. She'll be right yeah. here. May I have the warrant? Please? Of course you can. I have not paid one attention to you. Okay. No, you need a pen. There you go. All right. All right. 629. Everybody. Right, that one today. We're holding just the one. Oh, yep. Teresa was out last week, so she put them both together. She didn't lift her head when I was in this morning, so I knew she was busy. <laughs> I came in to tell her that I'll come yep. by tomorrow sometime and have it done. She hands it to me. I'm like, really? I was in earlier. And she did not lift her head this morning when I was in. <laughs> Which I knew she means she was doing something. For a business. I hear. I heard the door just ring. Yeah. Ash, did you go along? Are you still going for your long walks? Okay. Oh, I just want to, I don't like to leave the downstairs. I'll go, I'll go. Are you still going for your long walks? Your long walks. Yeah, long you still walks. go for your long walks. Yes. Oh, I did. Did you get a up there? I did. I'm not the vest up. I did the burger. Yes. Yeah. The vest lob. Let's say that. I did well. It was, it was great. It was spectacular. I know. I am. <laughs> not a real baby. <laughs> no, although that would have been interesting. But you know, it's it's like it's too the rich line is really hot. So hot. There's so many people. Carol, how are you? And if you're not Very in the valley, you start. Sometimes they, they I hear two or three hours to get past the start. Huh? Yes. So when I was about to be all an hour to get to Did you really mind? So good for you. I it's, it's on my list, but I I, I, I kind of like one to go one, you know. You know, it's just you know, it's such, such a giant list. That's cool. I that's cool. I know you've done that twice. That's awesome. Are you running for selectman? Are you running for selectman, John? All right, it's 631 in Reedfield, Maine. Please stand and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Monday, April 24th, 2023 Select Board meeting of the Reedfield Select Board. This evening we have uh, plenty of agenda items, and we are scheduled till 8 p.m. We begin this evening with item 23108, uh, the minutes uh, from April 10th, 2023. I'd make a motion to approve the minutes of April 10th, 2023, with a couple of grammatical errors that I'll let um, you know, after the meeting. Okay. As amended then, yes. Yes. All right. Second that. It's been uh, moved and seconded to approve the uh, minutes from April 10th as amended. Uh, is there any further discussion? Yes. Um, I would like to add that I made two motions. Um, one was the motion to split out all of the items in the capital improvement warrant article. And it was not seconded, so it didn't go anywhere. And I also made another motion um, to have open space in its own article. And that was not seconded, but I would like all of that noted. Sure. Yes. It should have been. And should yeah, it should have been in there. That might have been last. during the, but like when we were discussing all the articles. Oh, no. I think I think those were I think those actual motions were from the meeting before. I think you just spoke no, to them this last no, time. It was this last time. No, it was it was yeah, it was we reviewed it at April 10th. Yeah. That's when we went through and said, yeah. It was actually it was both. Let yeah. me just put it that way. Okay. Yeah. It was spoken yeah, yeah. at both. You can watch the tape and find it. Yeah. Excellent. So good. So so the motion is still as amended. So we have those two changes. Is there any further discussion? All right. All in favor? 
Thank you very much. Item 23109 or warrants 41 through 42. I think this is all <clears throat> Catherine Woodsome. Catherine, take it away. Okay. Just have to find my paper here. Mm. Okay. Let me get the right numbers. So 41A and B were both state fee warrants that uh, went out. One was for $5,867.75, and the second was for $3,645. Payroll was warrant 42, that was for $22,595.07. And warrant 41 was in the amount of, I'm going to make sure I do this right, 400. Oh, shoot, I meant to ask. Anyway, it was in the amount of $431,006.05. However, that is not what we're actually paying. So Eric, should I be reducing that by the payment that we did not make? Yes. Okay, so I just have to do some quick math here. Mm -hmm. And then I'll tell you what it's for. Can I ask a question about our sure. warrant article? Um, it, it, it remind me, is Douglas Aylborn, or is that a, a, a firm, a, some sort of? No, no that's the he, one we're talking about. Oh, that's what yeah, you're talking about. Okay. He was a, a former um, property owner in Reedfield okay. um, who we had uh, foreclosed on. Um, and we had been working to return the proceeds of that sale to him, which. Um, is not going to be as easy as we had intended. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll talk more about that later. But in short, we're, we're likely going to have to have a um, uh, an ordinance to allow us to do that. Oh, heavens! Um, because state law essentially supersedes even our policy on that that was uh, supported through through um, through our administrative ordinance. But okay. a roundabout way of saying um, uh, we don't have the authority to give the money back unless we have an ordinance. Okay. Well, that looks like something we have to look forward to. It is, um, unfortunately. Are you still doing math? Well, no, I'm having my calculator do it. Oh, okay. wonderful. Either way, it's the satellites. Okay, so this is going to be, this is going to affect the bottom line then. Let me do that also. Sorry. So again, we're just, there was an adjustment to one of the um, line items. Line items, and so discuss. that's why we are doing so some math that's why we do this warrant review um to make sure that everyone knows um how the the every bit of money is going out um these warrants are available uh online under the readfield uh, main.org and you can find all of the information that it, we are looking at ourselves under the select board link so if you're following along at home and okay, want that so the correct amount for warrant <clears throat> 41 is going to be $398,090.35. And the total is going to be $420,685.95. And so the cost for that, as Eric said, but I want to do it uh -huh. exactly where this was printed in the warrant. Yeah. No, just too many pages. <laughs> So it was uh, vendor 00225 to Douglas Alborn. It was proceeds of a property sale. And as Eric stated, we have to have an ordinance in order to disperse this. And it was for the amount of 32,915 and 17 cents. So this was a property that we foreclosed on. And this is the remainder after we paid the fees for all the filing and the cost of selling the property. And all the back taxes. And all the back taxes, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. obviously. And this is more than uh, the person had been offered by someone prior to the foreclosure. Okay. So this is working out in the former owner's benefit financially, except that he's going to have to wait at least six months to get his money now. Um, because the next, unless we call it a special town meeting, but if we do it in November when we're already having a election, mm -hmm. Um, we could do it at that point in time. So this is something that needs to come up on a future agenda chair. Right on. I said okay. looking forward to it. We'll probably discuss that <laughs> at our retreat. So other items of interest, I just wanted to point out that um, Archie's Incorporated has a charge for $2,639.28. And they're one of our commercial haulers. So it seems odd that we, we, we would be paying them, but they're under a special agreement because they have a compactor truck that they pick up with Eric. Yes. Um, we have them take it directly to Norwich Walk and they pay for it in Norwich Walk, but it's um, billed at the town rate. Yes. 
So that prevents us from having to have that unloaded into our compactor, which would take a long time and it would fill our compactor up and cause us to have a transportation fee on top of it. So they just do it directly <clears throat> and they're happy with that because then they can take it whenever they're full <clears throat> and it's quicker for them. So it works out. And we just reimburse that. We reimburse them. Gotcha. Um, Capital Area Youth Softball Association, um, $770. This is for the U-12 league um, that is in Augusta um, that they play. And I thought that was really cool. Um, I noticed on our utilities for electricity to central main power, all but one of the bills, because it's on a different schedule, uh, was $2,412.34. And I'd like to make the suggestion that we look into going off the standard offer for electric um, and maybe quarterly check what the other rates are. Um, now's probably not the time to do it, but once rates stabilize and start to go down again, um, I think we could have some real savings. Um, another one that was really cool, um, Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens for $150. This is a library pass enrollment. So for $150, the town of Reedfield gets a pass that any resident or summer resident, you know, person who has property in town can go to the library and take out the pass. It's for two people for a full day. Mm -hmm. It's like $30 a day it's more than that. for the fee to get in. And all you have to do is go to the library and sign up with Melissa. So if it, the day you want to go is taken, sign up for another day. But someone could go, two people from town could go every day all year while they're open for this ridiculously low rate. Um, so that's- yeah, It also includes children. You can get up to four, two adults and four children on that. On that one pass. On that one pass. Wow. Nice. That's like the best $150 I think we've ever spent. <laughs> I mean, the return is gigantic. Um, so I just thought yeah. that was real interesting. On um, the Kennebec main- Valley Humane Society, $1,162 is quarterly, and that was paid. Uh, we had a new door installed downstairs here at the town office. That was the PDQ door for $2,275. It's really cool because it's got glass in it. So when you're going to walk in, you can see who's inside the office already. But more importantly, when you go to leave, you're not going to push into somebody who's standing in the hallway trying to come into the office. And that looks really super. Uh, so all together, we came up with, I don't know where we're going. Uh, I have a total of $420,685.95. That would be correct. And that is for both warrants, yes? That's for, that's for all four. All four, okay. Okie dokie. I'll make a motion to approve those warrants and the amount Dennis just mentioned, the amended amount. Mm -hmm. I'll second. All right. It has been moved and seconded uh, to approve uh, the warrants for a total of $420,685.95. Is there any further discussion? I just want to say, first of all, thank you, Catherine. Thank you for being Welcome. thorough. Thank you for doing a wonderful job, and we certainly appreciate it. Uh, all in favor? Thank you very much. And I'll just point out that we signed this at the last meeting, and... Steve is going to grab that one back and we're going to pass it around so that everyone can sign it. This was the one that was ready today. Um, and I've reviewed it so it can be signed at your leisure tonight before we leave. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, we now come to communications. We have 20 minutes set aside for this item. Uh, select board communications are first. If any member of the select board would like to address uh, the public, now is your time. Go ahead, Kath, Carol. Question. Um, Few people have asked about the electric car in the parking lot. And this was passed when I was pretty new. Um, is there any monthly or annual fees we're paying for that? Not, not, no, there's not. Okay. I thought it said that when we voted on it, it was um, budget neutral. Yeah, um, the in in a year or so we have the opportunity to to, to buy the lease if we'd like to, uh, but uh, right now we're not paying anything for that lease. Okay. We do have a small electric fee for the the you know the electricity it uses to charge up and so on, uh, but there's no recurring fee and it is um, uh, no 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 impact currently. Okay, that's what I thought I recalled. Um, Can I ask and then will there be a 
vote like a year from now or whatever when we have the option to buy it out is that another op like discussion and vote yeah that would be a select board decision because i think it would be somewhere around 15 to twenty thousand dollars i'd have to look back at the lease but um yeah so did we pay the lease be for the first three years with the rebate that was offered through efficiency main yeah so the the, the efficiency main rebate covered the cost of the lease fully yeah up, and, up until the time that we have the purchase option that's correct yeah so it's a three-year three-year period and i think did it cover the whole thing or was part of it offset by what we weren't going to be paying in mileage uh, no, what we're what we're not going to be paying in mileage, um, and what we haven't paid in mileage, uh, is just a, a, a cash benefit or a value to the town of not having to pay for that, and uh, that or would... paying a lower rate because the uh, cost of the uh, EV is uh, per mile, we, you know, with the current situation, uh, is less than than paying for mileage. That was it. I think it was the electricity we were going to be charging was going to be far less than what the mileage had been. Yeah. And so what we would want to be looking at in another year is if we go back to not having the car and we have to pay someone mileage. And I think some other people have used it besides just the code officer. Yeah, actually it gets used a lot more by other other folks. The code officer um, just doesn't really like to drive it. Um, and uh, so it, it, it sits, but um, when he doesn't drive it, he doesn't get reimbursed for mileage because we have a vehicle that he's able to use, he chooses not to probably I'd say 60% of the time, uh, but um, it's there if he wants it. And uh, um, and it's great to have for going to conferences, yeah. uh, going to Bangor and back, uh, Augusta and back, things like that. So, yeah. Do we know like how much mileage it has on it or anything like that? We do, yeah, we know exactly uh, how much mileage it has on it. Um, but what we don't know is how much mileage we're actually um, uh, deferring uh, by, by having, um, folks not use it right so the code officer um i guess i i don't know we could look at historic numbers to try to uh, estimate what his weekly usage would be um but right now uh we don't have um really don't have a record of what his personal vehicle travel is do we know what the mileage is at this point on on the I, I, I can on find that yeah just i know um the animal control officer too had the option to use it but he has to go off road sometimes and that's probably the same thing with chip going down like camp well, roads and all that stuff sometimes a truck is it's much more... sometimes yeah i think um but that's a, a about a two percent issue with the code officer I, I i'm not sure why he doesn't use it more um but that's just my outlook on it um he likes his truck yeah yeah he likes right. his truck yeah that's right. so it is anything else defense, that's okay yeah anyone else thank you you had a second thing i think carol yeah. oh it was the warrants first. yeah 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 it the 30 yeah. something okay. thousand yeah Excellent. Uh, the one thing uh, I wanted to bring up during this particular portion is for um, our uh, Heritage Days. Uh, we had our first meeting uh, this Sunday at one o'clock uh, and had some new folks show up uh, from the library and also from the Reedfield Elementary P Parent Association or REPA, uh, which uh, is also going to be a part of our celebration this year. Um, we are having our next meeting uh, on Sunday. May 28th, uh, excuse me, May 21st, Sunday, May 21st is our next meeting. Uh, and we will basically start to kind of formulate our day. We're going to talk a little bit about what's happening uh, and pick pencil in some of the activities for that period. Um, uh, we, uh, you know, we had just a couple people put turn in, but I've gotten a couple emails from folks that say they still want to try to do things. Um, and so at that meeting on May 21st, we'll have a better idea of what is going to be happening. Uh, I thought about the business open house, if that was another thing that was uh, going to be a part of Heritage Days. Um, and we know that there are some new ideas about our volunteer dinner um, and celebration and Spirit of America awards uh, being combined uh, on that Saturday night. So uh, stay tuned. Um, if you are curious about what's happening with Heritage Days, you can find out more by following the Heritage Days Facebook page. Uh, we have a Facebook page that has all of the updates, all of the important dates and pictures uh, and the best place to follow it. So uh, that's all I want to say about Heritage Days. Great. So we will move on uh, to town uh, manager communications. We have five minutes for this. Eric, take sure. it away. 
Um, so I wanted to give just a brief update about some of the things happening in town. Um, we are moving quickly into the into the spring season. We have um, some new staff. Uh, we have uh, Chris Cassiani coming back to help us out. So for the first time in, in probably three or four years, uh, we're fully staffed in that area um, and have coverage of the transfer station. So I'm looking forward very much to uh, the spring here and getting some work done. Um, work that is being done, but not by town staff, uh, is a really uh, focused on Church Road at the moment. Uh, we're going to talk about the paving piece of that um, in, uh, in, a, in a few minutes, but I wanted to point out that uh, we are doing brush grinding uh, and tree cutting. We're in the midst of that process right now. Uh, it looks a little rough and it will for a while, uh, but um, that, um, that mulching uh, does help uh, preserve the road by opening it up. Um, the, the chips can help um, suppress some vegetation and make the road uh, uh, safer and, and more um, accessible. And um, it is going to be um, a bit of a trial. Uh, this type of work um, has been done uh, in other towns and the, the state of Maine um, uh, does that type of grinding. Uh, but it, it certainly has a different aesthetic for the first few weeks and few months uh, than, than cutting and removing everything from the roadside. So I just want folks to be aware that um, it may look a little bit rough now, but it will, um, it will improve uh, as, as the months go on. Um, and uh, th that's really what I wanted to say tonight. Cool. Uh, easy enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Um, our next item is boards, committees, commissions, and departments. Uh, if everyone had a chance to take a look, uh, we received minutes from the Age Friendly Committee, the Budget Committee, the Comprehensive Plan Committee, and a five-part trilogy, or five-part saga, I should say, uh, from the Conservation Commission, um, and, and it was great. It was like binge watching on Netflix. We got all the way from October 11th uh, to February 14th. It was fantastic. So uh, it was a, a, a pentology, perhaps, is what it was. Um, so thank you. Any comments about those uh, minutes or those particular submissions? I appreciate getting them, but I'd like to just remind committee chairs that we asked for minutes to be uh, monthly, and they're supposed to be submitted within a week of the meeting in draft form. Um, so, Eric, I think we need to look at um, if there's someone in the office who might be able to do something similar to what Kristen does with the messenger, sending out a reminder, you know, uh, Solid Waste Committee, Catherine, make sure you send me your agenda a week before your next meeting. Um, I, I think if we made a, a list and it, they just got sent out each week, um, an hour or so in setup, but then it would be easy, like she does with the messenger, to mm. just mm. remind folks and you know remember submit your minutes within a week. Um, yeah. Okay. I made a note of that. It would just be helpful. And I mean, I feel sorry for a secretary who has to pull together five months of min minutes all at once too. That's that's burdening. So. That's it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, we now have time set aside for public communication. Members of the public may address the select board. I'm going to start with people online. If there's anyone online who would like to oper uh, this opportunity to speak uh, to the select board, you may unmute and speak to us if you'd like. All right, very well. Uh, if there are any members of the public here tonight who would like to address the select board, uh, you have the floor. All right, very well. Uh, seeing none, we move on to appointments, reappointments, and resignations. We have five minutes set aside for this. Item 23110 is to consider the appointment of, is it Pear, Pear Gar Garter to the road committee. Mr. Garter, will you please take the podium uh, and introduce yourself up there behind the, the speaker there. There we go. That is a microphone, Dennis. Thank you. All right. Uh, excellent. Uh, you can see uh, in uh, uh, page 15, excuse me, 16 is Pear's uh, interest form. Um, and uh, I would say pretty thoroughly um, <laughs> qualified. Uh, anybody have any questions? I'd just like to say that's quite the impressive resume you got there. Yeah, right there. <laughs> yes. Some road experience, civil engineer. Yeah. 
And thank you for jumping right from the job into a committee. Yeah, <laughs> just the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So <laughs> wonderful to have folks uh, with your background and, and to help out in Reedfield. So it's sorry about my accent that I don't pronounce the letter R very well. <laughs> After 30 years in made, I still haven't done it. But... Oh. Well, we skip it too sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I would entertain a motion uh, on behalf of this appointment. I'll make a motion to appoint Paragarter to the road committee effective tonight and a great term lasting through June 30th, 2025. Second that. It's been moved and seconded to appoint uh, Paragarter to the road committee uh, for a term that ends on 63025. Is there any further discussion? All in favor. All right, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, you may stick around or you may uh, have a good evening. It's up to you. Yeah, I would, I would, I'd go home and grab some dinner. Is what I do. Thank you so much. That's right. Absolutely. Yes, I do. Okay. Our next item uh, is there. to uh, talk about old business, uh, which is uh, important tonight. We have 15 minutes set aside for this. Item 23021 is to consider additional pavement grinding work and a contract amendment for Church Road. Eric, lead us through this. This is also an, an additional um, piece in our um, uh, supplemental uh, attachment in our online packet. Yes, and so the easiest way to think about this and look at this probably is with the supplemental information. Okay. Uh, some of the information provided uh, in the packet uh, is actually uh, a little bit out of date. Uh, and so, um, We've been working on Church Road, putting it in the capital investment plan. Uh, probably, well, it's, it's always been in there, but uh, it came up in 2022. Um, the project was approved uh, in uh, August of 2022. Um, and then we move forward and um, uh, we're uh, preparing to pave uh, and do the work this spring. Uh, in reviewing this project, uh, we see that there is a bigger need uh, for uh, reclamation work than what had originally been uh, envisioned. Uh, when we started this, we thought that uh, an, an overlay would be sufficient. Uh, and then an uh, overlay over just because I'm over the existing asphalt, right? Just another yep. lamination. And so uh, probably a month ago, I came to the select board and said, well, you know, there's a section here that's in rough shape. Uh, it looks like we should be grinding and reclaiming that. Um, and the more we got involved with this, the more we got out in the field and looked at the pavement conditions, uh, it became apparent that that area also should be expanded. Uh, so originally we were looking at uh, reclaiming the area in front of the, um, primarily in front of the cemetery where it's lower, where we have the potholes. Um, but once you crest the hill there, uh, you run into an area where it's not potholed, but you have um, uh, pavement breaking up in the travel lanes, so the wheel lanes, uh, you have, it looks almost like a spider web in, in a lot of places because of the, um, the, the crack ceiling that's been done. Uh, and so uh, looking at this, uh, we did bring it to the road committee and discuss this. Uh, it seems as though our best option would be to fix the base before we pave over it. Um, it would be something like painting over peeling paint on your house. Uh, it's not a good idea. Uh, and having recognized that this need exists, uh, we could try to break it up and do it over a couple of years, or uh, we could do it uh, now uh, as part of this project. Um, and that's the recommendation that we came to is to do it right and do it fully. Uh, Church Road is one of our longer roads. It's two miles, uh, 2.15 miles. Uh, and it's also one of the most heavily traveled uh, roads we have in town. So uh, it's very important to do it correctly. What uh, the select board has approved so far have been three pieces. The, the original $352,000 uh, 600 um, contract from 2018 uh, and a $19,000 uh, reclamation that covers the section from the fairgrounds to pool road. Um, and then we also approved the uh, 11,000 for tree and brush work, uh, which we can consider you know, more or less separate, but it's important to know that that's part of the overall cost of the project. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, hasn't been uh, approved would be the additional grinding from pool road to fog road. So that same treatment of taking the, the asphalt that's damaged and cracking uh, and, and, and badly cracking, grinding it up and making that a base layer. Once that's done, we can then add 
the base asphalt, which is uh, the next line in this um, supplemental piece. Uh, and that would be for $118,277.50 as an estimate. So all of these are tonnage estimates, right? We don't know until we get on the, in the ground uh, what actually is going to be needed. But um, these are pretty reliable numbers. We've talked about them with Pike. Uh, we know the length and width of the road. We know how thick this is supposed to be. So their tonnage is, um, I think, are reliable in this area. So those two pieces take care of the um, the additions to the cost of this contract. But fortunately, we have some things that will help lessen the cost of the contract. The first of which is when you pave over roads that have a light rutting uh, or uneven surfaces or even potholes, which isn't advised, but it, it's, it's done, um, you have to put in a shim. So a layer of thin um, uh, asphalt that has smaller aggregate size. Uh, and that rolls out and makes a nice even surface so you can then do a full coat of the surface coat. Um, when you reclaim, you don't have to put that shim in because you are starting off with probably two and a half inches of solid base material that's been rolled and formed to the proper contour. So because we are looking at reclaiming a section of road um, that's, I'd say, probably, I think it was 3,700 feet. Um, 3,750. 3750. Um, that um, means we don't have to do the shim in that area. So that's going to save us $40,000, 39501 Also, when we signed this contract in August, um, the price of asphalt was much higher than it is now. So we're looking to be able to save about $6 per ton for the asphalt that we do put down. And that um, for the, um, the areas that we're talking about would be the shim in the areas that aren't being reclaimed and the um, overlay for the entire road length. Mm -hmm. So when you um, add those things up, yeah. one is 9,500, the other is 4,800. Um, and so we have somewhere around um, uh, 50, 53, $54,000 in savings to offset some of the added cost. Um, it's helpful. It's still a large chunk of money. We're looking at spending uh, upwards of $457,000 over the course of this project. But when you look at a two mile road and the rehabilitation work that's necessary and really putting money into doing things right so that we don't have surface cracking. Uh, I'm sure all of you have been on Route 17 uh, and Route 41 after the, the DOT comes through and paves, they do a, a half inch of pavement. Uh, and then the next summer, you have those cracks coming uh, you know, right back that, that were there uh, a year or two ago. Uh, so we don't want that to happen on Church Road. So. That's my long explanation of essentially a request to expand the scope of this project um, and to um, uh, spend approximately 457,000 in total on the work happening on Church Road. Sure. All right, let's go with Sean first. Eric, so, did you have something to Eric, if I'm clear from the green and red checked boxes, you're asking for another $74,282 over what's already been approved. In that, yes. Yeah. And where will we come up with that money? So currently we have around $608,000 that is available in our paving reserve. Uh, there's 150,000 that's set aside for other projects, uh, but we have 608,000 that could be used for this particular project. Um, and that's already there. It's already there, but uh, we do want to pay pay mind to the fact that we have some paving we'd like to do next year. We do have money budgeted three hundred twenty five thousand, if I remember correctly, coming July one to help supplement that. So we'll have probably close to five hundred thousand dollars again, uh, but we're looking at doing Lane Road and possibly Thunder Castle. Um, so this all plays into the long term schedule that we have. Uh, it doesn't really change, um, I think, functionally what's going to happen. It might change when it happens by, by a year, um, but probably less because we did have a bit of a buffer coming into this year. Uh, and so we do have capacity financially to handle this, to get this work done right and, um, and still be in a, in a position where we can uh, get other work done that needs to be done. Makes sense so. to me. Karen, did you have something? I just I was with you until you said hundred thousand something, but so there's the one I was with you with the three fifty and then the nineteen thousand and the eleven thousand for trimming, and then there's I was trying to get a grasp of what the increase was, which you clarified. 
um, yep. which was 74,000 something. And you said the roads committee met on this and they. Yeah, we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago um, and talked about the, the church road grinding and reclamation and paving um, and discussed, you know, how best to approach this. And I think, um, you know, th there, there wasn't much debate. It really, uh, their view is that putting good pavement over a pavement that's cracked uh, and alligator, which is the term they use when it looks like that, um, is just a, it's a bad idea and bad investment. So the, it was pretty well um, decided that uh, if we had the money, we should do it. Um, and um, and we do. let Pear go early. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good yeah, it seems like it seems like the, it, yeah. I I have to say I'm I'm intimately involved with a project right now in another town that is the same exact thing, where instead of having a good foundation to work on, they just kept laminating it, and so it's just it's just like anything. It just yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't work, and so certainly with the the eye towards the future of Church Road, which I agree, you know, is 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 a heavily traveled road. Um, I'd rather do it right the first time than 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 do something that was was bad if we have it set aside too. So I, I, I'm I'm pretty set with this. Anybody have any questions? Well, just one comment you made, Eric. What do you foresee that we would have to push other roads back? Because that. Well, not currently, uh, because we um, we actually are doing uh, engineering and testing right now uh, on um, uh, Lane Road uh, and. Um, we're doing test borings at the recommendation of the road committee uh, because there's some pretty bad rutting on that road. Uh, the, the, the pavement's not delaminating or anything like that, but there's some deep wheel wells. Um, okay. And uh, so we're wanting to understand why that's happening. So we're right now investing in engineering work for that. Uh, and uh, we'll be doing some work also on Thundercastle uh, Road uh, and Chase Road uh, because there are some areas there where we have uh, unexpected failures, I guess, uh, road uh, surface conditions that are quite rough. So long story short is um, we're kind of in an intervening period where we're assessing what to do next um, and getting more information about what the base material looks like so we can decide, do we want to put in geotextile fabric? Do we want to reclaim this? Is there a culvert there we don't know about, which is what we think may be happening in one spot? Um, but when, the, we originally, yeah. when we originally approved Ch Church Road, I don't want to say the wrong road now. Yeah. We originally approved Church Road last fall. I mean, yes. you, you had a pretty good list of estimates for other roads in town. With it's like a forecast. I just, the road yeah, forecast I just too. hope yeah, that yeah we don't change those forecasts because I know we've bumped stuff before and and then yeah. like Church Road, we're catching up because it got bumped, right? I, I and that's think, why it might yeah. have got a little worse. You're absolutely right. Yeah, the fact that this had to wait a year. Um, yeah. because of in, in large part because of delays that started with COVID and, right. and rolled forward but um, I think that what would happen is right now Lane was ahead of Thundercastle in the in the work schedule uh, I think that um, likely what will happen is we'll end up doing Thundercastle prior um, and maybe even a certain section of it just to fix that base issue mm -hmm. um, and a section of Chase uh, but I think that with um, with close to five hundred thousand dollars in reserve, we never want to use all of that because we do have emergencies that come up. But I think that we can do um, pretty easily one of those roads being much shorter than than church. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're probably a half mile. Well, uh, uh, Lane is probably half mile. Uh, Thund Thundercastle and Chase add up to probably three quarters or maybe a little bit more. Mm. Um, but those those will take a little bit more money. But I'm, I'm comfortable that what we have in reserve will allow us to do one of those projects and then carry forward. And I don't think there's any harm uh, long-term at all to, um, uh, to spreading that out. And if need be, we can look for a little bit additional funding. I'm not sure that's gonna be necessary. I think that we had a sizable buffer going into this and we'll be okay. Great. So, good. Go ahead, Catherine. You haven't mentioned the, um, I'm not sure how to word it, the project in front of the Mason's Hall. Yeah, so that's part of those allocated funds. Okay, and um, the corner up at P Ridge and Nickerson. Yes, we have fifty thousand for those, and we also have um, again some part of that money coming next year would be to help supplement that work. And so by next year, you mean in July? In July, yes. Uh, coming next up. fiscal year. Next yeah. fiscal year. Okay, so they're still in the plan and not being pushed out again. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. And just as a side note, I often think that, you know, people just assume that, that, that people know why Eric knows this, but Eric is actually, in addition to the town manager, the road commissioner. And so he, he knows a thing or two about the road. So it's interesting to hear it all sort of break down. So 
Thank you very much. Anything else? Go ahead, I Steve. I just have one more question yeah. for the man who knows a thing or two. Um, so <laughs> just, just one or two. Is, is there a number that you like to keep in the road reserve? Paving reserve for the roads? Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. I think that's one of the discussions I'm hoping we can have in uh, July or August when we have our planning meeting with the budget committee. Uh, having those reserve thresholds um, is going to be a really important discussion. Um, I, I wouldn't want anything less than, than about one hundred fifty dollars to $200,000 in there. Um, and that's about where we would be at the end of this project for this year. But again, we'll be in July starting off with a fresh batch and we'll be back up to 500, uh, almost 500,000. Because for um, example, didn't we spend $75,000 on rain issues during that storm in December? All, less all than week? that, it was probably 40. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But a chunk. But yeah. a big chunk, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's one That's reason why, it yeah, exactly. why we have a, a road capital reserve and a road operating reserve, yeah. because th those funds really, um, when you have storms, uh, storm damage like that, that most of the time would come out of the operating. Uh, budget, but um, in this case, we had to dip into the the, the reserve because it was such a sizable amount. Right. So. Yeah. Sorry again. No. Go so for two it. things. Um, we scheduled that meeting with the budget committee for June, correct? Yeah. I'll have to check that. I probably gave a wrong date. Um, well, you just said in July or August. Oh well, th then I'll make sure you I said correct it was that. The second June meeting. So. All right. Um, and oh shoot, what was the other thing? Oh jeez. Think about the road, grinding, roads. Yeah, it's not that important. Oh, well. Um, well, and just before you guys uh, uh, vote on this, I do want to say that the last piece of this, um, the last two pieces, will be striping the roads once it's paved yeah. uh, and some traffic calming. Um, we are already concerned about speeding on Church mm -hmm. Road. Um, I am gravely concerned about speeding on Church Road after we clear the brush from the road edges and make it, perfectly smooth for two miles. Uh, so we're going to be looking at some some um, different measures. We talked about some with the road committee um, uh, to try to help slow people down. We might try some painting. Uh, we might try to put in some of the, 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 the little bollards that, that you've seen in Mount Vernon um, to help just give people a visual cue. Um, and of course, we're going to have our road speed sign out there. It should have, um, if it didn't go out there today, it'll be out there tomorrow. Um, in anticipation of this work, but um, I just wanted folks to know that we are very aware and, and share concerns about speeding on Church Road, yeah. uh, especially after this work's done. So, yeah. Carol? Um, so you have the plans for both sides of the Church Road sidewalk. This is a little bit off topic, but it's while well, you're talking about sure, Church Road. Yeah. Is there a date for discussion with the residents yet or can we set one uh we we, uh, we have a date for um the engineers to come and talk to the select board uh first uh because uh the board you'll be answering questions from the public so in discussing it with the engineer it made sense to give you a heads up about the two options and the pros and cons and all of that information that was uh, presented so that you can then field questions from all residents in town so right now we're looking at having that meeting on on may 8th um, your next select board meeting that would be the time to then talk with the engineers and set a time for a public hearing um, i mean the public is welcome to come and talk at the select board meeting but they felt and i felt that it was important for you to have the information so that when people ask you questions you can have answers Thank but, you. but 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 I, I I don't think um we have put off the public since last fall and they've been asking. So let me just say the the engineers are going to meet with the public, right? Yes, they will. They'll meet with the public. The, the, we have three meetings scheduled, one with the select board, or it's not scheduled, but three meetings that are budgeted and yeah. planned. W one with the select board, one with the residents who live on the road, and then one with the general public. And so the the, uh, the the intent was to have a meeting with the select board so you could be answering questions from everybody, um, which you'll get, uh, and then meet with the individual property owners and then have the meeting with the general public. But all three of those meetings, of course, are open to public comment. It's not as though it's just the engineers talking with the select board. Um, the forum really is the select board meeting as opposed to the, the individual uh, meeting. And really anybody can come to any of those meetings it's not a closed door meeting just with the, the property owners, although that'll be the focus of that second meeting. I'm not comfortable answering any questions of the public or the residents until the residents on that on that uh, 
road have had a chance to be heard. So can we make it, I, I don't know. I, I don't think we come first. I don't want people asking me questions about that project that they've been waiting for a very long time to be heard. Can we put the residents on that road that this will impact as soon as possible? I, I just- I mean, I guess that's a discussion for the for the select board. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, I'm just moving things forward. If you don't, if you don't have a, I if you're not comfortable with the schedule, yeah. then, then you could, um, I mean, so, they're, they're certainly able to come to the meeting on the 8th. Yeah. Um, let me ask Sean. Sean, go ahead. What would you well, think I was the question? To say, I like that idea only because I was approached by somebody from the church road after it was posted. And we did you share it? Facebook? Share yeah, it? yeah. Yeah. During the meeting. So somebody yeah. said, I saw that. No, the actual be the whole stuff's up on the site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and so the I tried to look at it to answer a question. And it is confusing. And so I would like to get the information just so that I know what I'm reading a bit better from the drawings because there's there's a lot of lines <laughs> yeah yeah and colors for different things so i would really like to know i would like to be more educated on the two side the pros and cons of both sides of the roads and what these drawings mean before i speak to anybody else is, is it possible to make a special invitation to the people who are living on the residents on church road we're going to have this select board meeting absolutely yeah, going to be here you're welcome to come of course they would be anyway, but yeah. Yeah. there's no yeah. harm in like making sure we tell them, well, yeah. what, right? Directly. I mean, you know, send them a little note or something. What about just having both meetings on the same night? So we could start the select board meeting at 5.30 or at 6. Oh, probably not before 5.30. I know some of you are working and can't mm -hmm. get here. Um, but we could have our meeting and then um, have the public that are on that road that would be most directly affected um, in terms of their property the same night. Hmm. Um, and so that way we could have our chance to talk and discuss with the engineers without the public asking questions and then have the public have their chance to ask questions. You see what I'm saying? I, yeah. I think it should be jo uh, joint because I would like to hear what the residents on that road ask as right, well. But as the governing body, we have to make sure that we understand what's there and what's being presented so i think we have to have a chance to ask the questions first about understanding as much as we can about the engineering aspects and how that affects things and then you know for whatever period of time that is 20 minutes a half an hour and then have public comment after that and and directed to the residents i think i mean it's all in the same meeting yeah i like having them the same i i'll tell you i i don't i don't think there's any problem having just a little bit of a, a kind of an opportunity to kind of one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, we will be the point of contact, whether the engineers are here or not, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're going to, people are going to come to us for certainly. Um, but I, I like the idea of having both meetings on the same night and just, just a little bit of a preview. So then we could hope to disseminate it. Um, Cause I know I'm going to have questions. Um, and hopefully once we get to the public meeting, if we've had the same questions, we can share that with them. So I, I, I like the idea of having it earlier and having both meetings on the same night, May 8th, um, which would be just sort of the first, it, it would be sort of the first foray into what I think is going to be a couple of these, which which they want. Doesn't that yeah. seem redundant, though, for the engineers? It's going to be a lot, I would guess, a lot of the same questions. Mm. And so instead of the engineers, we're, take, we're paying these engineers hourly, I would assume. So instead of them taking their time to answer our questions and the residents to ask the same questions when they're going to lay it out, that just seems really well, redundant Carol, time of theirs. If the residents are at the first meeting, the select board meeting. Are, are you guys saying they're welcome at our Of course. Meeting? Of course. They're oh, all, they, all, they always are. Yes. I'm just yeah, not absolutely. saying it was what we do here yeah. is we have a public comment section. Okay. And then we have our business. Yeah. And then, and, and so then I, you have the public. So we would just yes. have the presentation okay. yep. made with a chance for us to ask questions yeah. from a, a different standpoint because we're not the residents on the road. It, yeah. We're the people who have to pay for it and make sure that everything is copacetic for everybody. Yeah. And yeah. then have the residents have their chance to respond after they've listened to all the mm -hmm. same things that we've heard. So they'll, they'll be hearing the same things we are, right? Yeah. yeah the same. Okay, they, that's yeah. what so I was getting. It's yeah. not, not an yeah. executive session. It's yeah, a, it's, it's a whole yeah. Session. absolutely just like any. Right. Yeah. So the first one will be the first one will be the select board meeting, and then the second one will be uh, the public meeting, the, the hearing 
for but the like we're meeting public public be absolutely all the same information absolutely. it's just semantics it's so, it's they're so both public you're right. I mean, they may have some of the same questions but if we ask a question first and then someone in the uh one of the residents goes oh that answers one of the questions i had yeah right um, so, so maybe yeah maybe what we should do is do all of our business first if we started yeah. at 5 30 and then have the engineers here with the public at 6 30. Mm -hmm. Oh, good and, idea. and we'll have them make a presentation and then we'll have time for us to ask questions and then we'll have time for the public to ask questions. Yeah. Does that work, Carol? Yeah. yeah. As long uh, as it's all our brainstorming here. Yeah. yeah, everybody, everybody's welcome. And I think we have to be prepared for it to take some time. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And not trust and really work, you know, friend over here is whispering in my ear about <laughs> times. Um, Two hours. You know, say, but it's, but it, Sandy's right. We want to make sure people don't feel like they're absolutely, you know, we right. have a five minute public. So just making sure right. people don't think it's part of the five minute public. This will be right. a special yeah. party. Oh yeah. This is a, this is a yeah. special. We're going to focus <laughs> on, at that meeting on people who are on church road, not that other residents in town couldn't be here and maybe ask questions, but I think the, the intent here is for the first hearing to be mm. to let those people express their input yes nope. whatever it is and then we're going to have another have separate again. meeting at another date correct <laughs> it will be general public comments mm -hmm. yes so, so the the intent was to have just just because different stakeholder groups have different focuses uh and different interests um what was originally and was um, presented and approved as part of that whole budget uh was to have those three stakeholder meetings one for the select board one for the the residents on the road uh, and then one for the general public. So if you're doing two together, um, that'll probably save some money. Um, uh, it might not give you the same um, level of, of, of engagement that you might have otherwise, but but that's that's okay if that's that's the intent. Um, and then we will have another public hearing and the, the, the meetings with the public would be at the public hearing. So we would notice it as a public hearing. And the public is invited to the that public's public invited. Hearing. Yeah. Including so so you the would people who live on the road. And the people and the people yeah. who don't. Yeah. Um yeah, anybody, you know that's public. that's always the case with public hearings. Good. I'm going to request <laughs> that we uh sort of get back to item 23021, uh which is consider additional pavement grinding work for the contract amendment for church road. Uh I would entertain a motion to accept this or one way or another anyway. I need to understand the total amount first. Yes. Is, uh, is the 457 is that the total because we don't want to reapprove yeah we don't no. want to reapprove the tree work for instance that's right yeah so so that would be the total estimate again the numbers that we have are based on estimated tonnages um so it might be better to just approve the scope uh and the um the unit prices that are described in the attachments uh, as opposed to the final number, but um, I think if you wanted to give a safe number, you could say four hundred seventy-five thousand. But I, I just recommend that you approve the scope. Um, and and then the, that's uh, on the Pike Industries, the one eighteen two seventy-seven fifty. Yes, and that shows the the unit price uh, for the for the per ton of asphalt. The unit price, okay. uh, and then the same unit price for the it's grinding a, a as well. Item. So approve the unit price, Eric. Is that what you're saying? Oh, it's the second page of that. Do we have to do we have to even approve that? Can that unit price change based um, on I mean oil it, is changing? It, it, it may anyway. change in the two weeks that we're yeah. uh, here. So it's like I said, these are estimates. So it is a little bit tricky. If you wanted to go give a high cap, um, you could take that approach. Um, or you could just approve the um the scope uh, of the project, which would be um reclaiming from uh, the fairgrounds to fog road. Uh, uh, adding uh, the um, uh, the base asphalt, uh, and then uh, shimming the uh, the remaining length and overlaying the entire the entire road length. Because um, we don't want to approve one hundred eighteen thousand, because no. that's not what we're. No, that's right. No, I, I yeah. got that. Yeah, yeah, I understood that. You want to make that motion, Sean? Oh, oh thanks. You get Catherine. it. I think so. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but you know. Uh, so I make a motion to approve an additional base reclamation from pool to fog road, as well as the base asphalt for the fairgrounds to fog in the current scope of work with Pike. He's I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the scope of the work uh, as uh, indicated on, uh, on Church Road. Uh, is there any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, new items to discuss. Item 23111 is discuss the plan for annual roadside cleanup day. 
Uh, and I can do that right now, as a matter of fact. Um, every year uh, in May, um, I have to say that when I started on the select board, I had someone who was taking very good care of me uh, and showing me and telling me what was happening when I had questions, and that was John Parent. Uh, John Parent really enjoyed and uh, promoted a Reed Field cleanup day uh, in May. And uh, we've sort of continued that through COVID, we had it be uh, the whole month of May. Uh, and that way people uh, could uh, do uh, cleanup at their leisure. Um, and whenever they were able to throughout the month. However, this year, we're going to try to do a hybrid of both of those. We are going to say that the official Reedfield cleanup day for May is Saturday, May 13th. It's the Saturday before Mother's Day. And do a good deed. Make your mom proud of you before you buy her cake. But that is Saturday, May 13th. That day is when uh, you may see folks uh, on the side of the road use caution. Every year when we do the cleanup, there are uh, basically equipment and uh, little items that are available from the uh, transfer station, like grabbers and bags and vests. Uh, and gloves and things like that. And that's going to be on the 13th. Now, if for whatever reason you can't be there on the 13th, maybe you're going to see your mother in Poughkeepsie and you can't be there, we're still offering that equipment uh, at the transfer station uh, throughout the month of May. So we're designating a day where we feel like the community can all come together. But if that doesn't work for you because everyone has different schedules, um, you can certainly uh, go to the transfer station, get your grabbers, your gloves, uh, and your bags, and clean up your road. The way this works is on uh, the website, as well as the reedfieldmain.org website, as well as the Facebook page. We will have a sign up genius uh, program. You basically go on there and you sign up to clean your road or a road near you in Reedfield. Uh, and we've had pretty good success over the years with getting people to sign up for their roads. Uh, but this year, uh, we hope for even more. So uh, that's kind of what we're looking at for the Reedfield roadside cleanup. Bravo. Yay. I'm glad to do this, and I hope uh, Mr. Parent is uh, looking down on us uh, with a smile. Uh, our next item is item 23112, which is to consider a special event liquor license for Kent's Hills School. Uh, this can be found in your packet on page 25. Looks like it is a reunion and alumni engagement. Uh, we have done these before uh, for Kent's Hill, which is why uh, I don't think that they uh, have to be here tonight. Um, any questions about this? I'd just like to thank, I think it's Emily Delavo yeah. um, for having a complete application. That's always very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very clear. And um, the stick figures really do give. <laughs> Um, I would say that, you know, when, when I, when I see this in my mind, I see the stick figures. So thank you very much, Emily. We appreciate it. Um, it I would entertain a motion to approve this. I'll make a motion to approve the Kent's Hill alumni reunion engagement on June 9th and 10th from 6 PM to 11 PM. Second. For, a, for what? Oh, Excuse me? For a liquor license. For a liquor license. Oh, good. There we go. <laughs> second. There we go. Excellent. It's been moved and seconded to approve the liquor license for the Kent's Hill School uh, reunion event, uh, which is happening uh, June 9th and 10th. Uh, is there any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Nope. Oh, well, no. do we, don't we adjourn it? No, we have to go into executive session first. Yes. I'm sorry. If you could have someone make different. the motion, we can then go downstairs, yeah. discuss, and um, there is no action planned after. This is just a discussion for oh, yeah. the union contract negotiations. Yeah, we'll that figured out. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so we don't come back up. You don't come back up, it's, uh, but, um, we'll but put that in our the meeting would be adjourned that. at that works. time. I'll make the motion. I'm reading this from the, the agenda. Mm-hmm. I'll make a motion to enter an executive session to discuss a labor negotiations matter, specifically the AFSCME 93 local 201100 contract renewal pursuant to one MRSA section 405 subsection 6D 
invite the town manager to attend and state that we will be having no further business at the conclusion of the executive session. Second. second. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's been moved and seconded to do all of that. Uh, all in favor? Thank you very much. We are there. Thank you.